Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. Tonight's the night that could change someone's life forever. The numbers are being drawn, so break out your Mega Millions ticket or tickets. If you match the six numbers needed, the Mega Millions jackpot would be yours at $1 billion. It's the second largest in U.S. lottery history. Now, as soon as the winning numbers pop up, we'll pass them along. For now, a 77-year-old Fargo woman is back home tonight safe and sound after she went missing earlier today. Authorities say Adele Shenick, who has Alzheimer's, wandered away from her husband around 11 a.m. Police issued a code red, and shortly after that, she was found unharmed. Incidents like this can happen in the blink of an eye and are not only a threat to the individual, but place a great deal of pressure on family and friends. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly gives you an inside look into the care of those diagnosed. Caring for someone with Alzheimer's takes commitment and patience. And millions across the nation are stepping up to make sure these people are safe. So the responsibility is huge for someone that's caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's. So 5.7 million people in, a, in our country have Alzheimer's form of dementia. So that's a lot of people that need care. But there is a lot that goes into consideration when caring for those that have been diagnosed. So learning about the disease process, educating yourself, putting yourself in their reality, making sure that you know the time of days that are good making sure we're safe with our words and, and being kind. Never saying, do you remember this? Why, why don't you remember that? To make sure that you have the safety precautions in place, such as an alarm on your home. Ultimately, safety is the number one priority. But Sando says this can sometimes present a challenge for caregivers, as every person is different and no day is the same. 50% say they're burnt out. It's a really hard job. It's they don't really get a whole lot of respite care. And that's why she says it's important that people caring for these loved ones take care of themselves as well. You know, really need to take care of themselves because they're putting their loved one before their personal needs. So it's important to really gauge them and, and say, hey, you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of another person. She says caregivers need to take advantage of resources like social media networks, support groups, or counseling to be sure that families stay healthy. She says everyone should keep in mind that support for caregivers is a necessity. In Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. And for more information on caregiver support, go to our website at valleynewslive.com and click on this story. The mercury continues to drop, so temps are falling. There's some rain and might even be some flakes falling as well. Let's check in with Hutch on the latest in tonight's weather. Hutch? Mike, I got to tell you, we are about to get a taste of winter for some areas and cold, blustery weather heading back into the valley to begin our weekend. Things quiet in Fargo, but look up to the north, a line of showers from near Grand Forks out towards near Bemidji, where you see the orange and red colors in Grand Forks County. That's heavier rain. There are a couple of areas is it might be seeing some of that rain changing over to some light flakes. No accumulation likely up there near Langdon and into Walsh County, as well as the International Falls area. But Grand Forks right now, heavy rain, where you see that red working its way to the south and east. That will push down along the Red River Valley to the south and to the southeast over the upcoming hours. Also, just to the west of Northwood, a heavy shower. Temperatures are brisk already. Mid-30s in Roseau, holding on to 47 in Jamestown, 49 in Sisseton. Best chance of showers will be after 11 o'clock here. Likely rain in the FM area, but look at rise and shine temperatures. They're cold, Mike. We'll be in the 30s with wind chills in the teens for you tailgaters out there. All details on the rest of your weekend outlook here in a minute. Brisk, indeed. All right, thanks. Authorities say a former Fargo All-American wrestler died earlier this week from a heart defect. 18-year-old Curtis Lemaire of Prior Lake was found dead in his dorm at Northern State University in Aberdeen, South Dakota. His mother says Lemaire's roommate tried to wake him up for wrestling practice, but he died in his sleep. His funeral is Monday morning in Prior Lake. Matt Bush shelters, Matt Bush shelters across Moorhead have been vandalized. The glass in the shelters was shattered, and police say the damage is consistent with someone using a BB gun and shooting out the windows. The damage estimates at this time are around $4,000. The Moorhead transit manager tells us their goal is to get the shelters repaired as soon as possible. She says this large of an incident is unprecedented. That kind of thing does not normally happen. We, we usually have a panel here and there, you know, a few 
uh, maybe one a month, if, if that. So this is an unusual occasion. If anyone has information regarding this investigation, you're asked to contact the Red River Dispatch Center at 701-451-7660 and ask to speak with the Moorhead Police Supervisor. Earlier today, one person was airlifted to the hospital after two beat trucks crashed near Felton. Police say it happened around 615 at 110th Street and 160th Avenue intersection. Emergency crews found both drivers with serious injuries. As I said, one had to be airlifted to a Fargo hospital. The other was taken by ambulance. Their conditions remain unknown. Authorities are not saying what led up to the crash. It's Friday. This week's Valley's Most Wanted is 35-year-old Michael Kazmarski. Police say he's wanted out of Cass County for violation of a 24-7 program on a charge of failure to appear. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on Kazmarski. Authorities have identified the victim in a deadly train versus truck crash as 49-year-old Kurt Anderson. That crash happened Tuesday night around 11 just west of New Rockford. Authorities say a BNSF train was heading east when it smashed into the driver's side of the truck. Authorities say that the truck was stationary on the tracks at the time of the crash. Anderson from Cheyenne died at the scene. If approved, measure number one on North Dakota's upcoming November ballot will create an ethics commission aimed at groups who influence the state's elected officials and how they go about it. Measure one supporters produced documents showing how one lobbyist took legislative committee members out for dinner in March of last year six times, costing a total of $700. The group says the report underlines inadequacies in the current system and serves as a check on what's already in place. We think the citizens of North Dakota should know um, who is buying time, friendship, and favor among our elected officials. And it is, at this point, uh, has a lot of holes in the process. According to information about what lobbyists spend on your representative and how that money is spent will be available online. A 911 call that alerted authorities to the murder of a Wisconsin couple and eventually to the disappearance of their 13-year-old daughter was made from the cell phone of Jamie Kloss's mother. The dispatch log shows the call came from Denise Kloss's cell phone around 1 a.m. on Monday on October 15th. Authorities say the call seemed to signal distress in the home, but no one spoke directly to the dispatcher. The log states that after the call was disconnected, the dispatcher tried to call the number back several times, but it was not successful in reaching anyone. Deputies arrived on the scene within four minutes of that call being made. But in that short time, Jamie had disappeared. Anyone who sees Jamie or has any information on this ca case is asked to call 911 or authorities at 1-855-744-3879. Many law enforcement agencies encourage registered sex offenders in the valley to leave their lights off and not to give out any candy on Halloween. But without any laws of what they can and can't do, you could end up knocking on an offender's door if you don't do your research. One dad we talked with today says he took it into his own hands, making sure he checked his town's sex offender registry map. It's something everyone should kind of know. There is a registry where people can look and see where these people are housed now. Not saying that they're violent now or nothing, but it's, it's, you, you should be aware of where your children are going to be going to. Experts say to avoid any potential danger, you can bring your kids to local businesses like the mall or nursing homes to trick or treat. And to check out if a sex offender lives near you or along your Halloween, Halloween candy route, go to our website at valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Okay, here are the winning numbers for tonight's $1 billion Mega Millions jackpot. Mega Million numbers are 15, 23, 53, 65, 70, and the Mega Ball is 7. And if you do win, don't count on making a deposit for anywhere close to that $1 billion. Nearly all winners take the cash option, which is for about $548 million. That, of course, is after federal taxes and state deductions. And the annuity option guarantees more money for you. It's paid over 29 years and would also result in a hefty tax bill. Good luck. Later on Valley News Live at 10, it's a Valley Con fan's favorite time of year. We'll check in on tonight's events.
Temperatures peaked 60 degrees today in Fargo. That's above average for the second day in a row, but things are changing. Be ready for some cold on your Saturday morning. Grand Forks 58 today and already the gusty north winds are importing some cold air. Look at Grand Forks gusting to 60 miles per hour. Your forecast is next.